Hello everyone and welcome to the series of uh, questions and answers based on the course of computational finance. Today we have a question number 22 that is based on lecture number 10. Uh, the question is as follows. What are the challenges of discretizing the CIR, the Cox-Ingersoll-Ross process, using the Euler's method? Uh, the CIR process, so the process that we can see here on the, on the slides, so this is the CIR process, it is a very popular process, especially because it's used in the dynamics of the Heston model. Uh, it is a non-negative process, so we, we start with the initial variance, which is bigger than zero. We have a mean reversion uh, element, so the volatility, the variance can go up and down, and the mean reverts to the long-term mean, and also it has a volatility. Um, this process uh, it is uh, very popular because it has the solution of this process has non-central high square distribution and is of much fatter tail than um, other commonly known distributions like normal or or for example log normal if we have fatter tails this means typically that we can uh, calibrate better to the market because then the, the extreme events are more likely to happen compared to the standard log normal or normal distributions what is also well known is that um, there is some called uh, the so-called Feller condition. Uh, this condition states that if we have a two times the mean reversion parameter multiplied by the long-term mean, this has to be greater than squared uh, volatility of volatility. So it's a vol-vol parameter. If this condition is satisfied, then we know that the paths or the distribution will stay away from zero. If this condition is not satisfied, then it's, there will be accumulation of, uh, um, of the probability mass around uh, zero. So in terms of simulation, there will be, a, there will be some number of paths that will be going towards uh, zero. Uh, the details about the CIR process and its applicability you can find in lecture number 10. So we, I spent quite some uh, time on, for this, uh, on, this, uh, uh, on this topic. Here we just concentrate on a discretization of Euler discretization of the CIR process. Um, if we go further, um, so this is a simulated number of simulated paths in two cases. The first case is where we have a failure condition satisfied. So we start with some initial point uh, zero 01, and it's the same here. This is the case where the failure condition is not satisfied. And here you can see that uh, for the satisfied failure condition, indeed, it, there is some kind of, a, it looks like a little bit like a normal distribution. However, you can actually notice that this uh, right hand side here, the values are le uh, less fat tailed than here. So there is a much more probability uh, than on the right hand side. So on the extreme events are more likely. If we look at the, but and the paths, however, they look like a mean reverting indeed. So we have this mean reversion, everything mean reverts around this long term mean. So it starts at the initial point and then goes towards the long term mean. In the case of the failure condition not satisfied, uh, we see something much more extreme. We see that the volatilities, so initially we have a very similar distribution as for the failure condition satisfied. However, as we go in time, as the simulation of the paths takes place, then some of the paths go close to zero and some of them, they are becoming very extreme. So we have accumulation. This is what the, the red, uh, the black the curve shows you we have a lot of accumulation around zero and at the same time we have uh, increased likelihood of extreme events and this is what we uh, what we also observe in the market so the question is maybe here what is the reason for this uh, we know that in the market we have fat tailed events much more than for example black scholes model can forecast uh, if we take model of cir which has much more fatter tails than um, um, in a Black Scholes case, this means that there will be more extreme events. That is good. However, on average, we have to still be around this level 0 0.1. In order to compensate, in order to average to be indeed around this long term mean level, we need to have a lot of realization around zero. And this is what happens if we wish to have some extreme cases while average stays on some predetermined level, this implies that we need to have a lot of paths, a lot of realizations around zero. The question is, if this happens, so if we have this case, what is the impact on the simulation? And this is the, 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 the key point of this question. 
what is the problem with the Euler discretization. Uh, for your information, in practice, once you calibrate the Heston model, this is typically the case. The Ferrell condition is hardly ever satisfied. In literature, you can see people um, apply Heston model and they say, we assume Feller condition to be satisfied and then they have some nice theoretical results or they perform something, but as long as they don't touch real market data, that works. In a case, if, if you want to calibrate your model, you will notice that your model, it's likely the failure condition for the math model is not satisfied. So we have this type of extreme cases. And this also puts a lot of pressure on a lot of stress on the dynamics of the model. And of course, if we simulate our model, we need to make sure that the solution that comes from the Monte Carlo simulation corresponds to one that we obtain from Fourier inversion. This is therefore very important that we have a discretization method that is accurate. Otherwise, we calibrate model with uh, with one model, we get some parameters, we take these parameters and we use Monte Carlo simulation, then we are not able to price back the market instruments or what we started with. So if the Monte Carlo gives us different results than what we would obtain from uh, Fourier transformation, that's a very big uh, red flag because this means we are inconsistent in our pricing. And that's typically in practice, that's not allowed. That's not the model that you would like to use. So let's take a look, look what are the problems with the Euler discretization if we consider the CIR process. So uh, with the Euler discretization uh, discussed in lecture number 10, this is what we do. We de derive uh, iterative process where the next iteration step depends on the previous, itera previous iteration step where we have a constant parameter, we have a DT term, and then we have the volatility, which is the gamma, and then we have a square root of the previous realization, and then we have a, uh, the, the Brownian motion part, actually in Euler discretization, it will be a square root of the time increment times Z, and Z is a normally distributed 0, 1. So normally distributed 0, 1. Normally it will be just a Brownian motion, but because we remove this time element here, then we only deal with the, um, actually we deal with the increments, uh, Brownian motion increments, and we remove the time effect here. So then we deal only with independent uh, Z, zetas, zets, which are the normally distributed uh, random variables. Okay, so if we have this, what we can do, we can actually calculate the probability of a variance being negative. So although theoretically uh, variance cannot be become negative because it's a square root process, we can still under the Euler discretization, that's a possibility because here you can see we are dealing with the Z which is normally distributed. So let's consider the case. So we have this probability of the variance smaller than zero given that previously we had a positive variance. So this means that this quantity we can just substitute here, right? So this becomes this expression, and then if we just collect all the terms uh, and then we leave z on the left hand side, this is what we end up with. And since, so we have a probability that z has to be smaller than this quantity. And of course, since we are dealing with a, a z which is normally distributed 0, 1, this probability, overall probability, is not zero because normal distribution, uh, the probability distribution function, it's not truncated. We are dealing from minus, the domain is minus infinity to plus infinity. This means that there is a chance that if we apply Euler discretization in the next step, if our Monte Carlo Euler discretization, the variance would become negative. And if variance becomes negative, it's a troublesome because we have the square root. So in, this means that in the next time step, we will plug in negative values under the square root sign. This means that your simulation will explode. And if you think, for example, let's take only real part or imaginary part from these complex numbers, that's not the way to go. That's really bad. That's a really bad approach. And very likely your results are completely wrong. So please be alerted. Uh, so this is the problem of uh, Euler discretization of the CIR process that some of the realizations can become negative and the probability of that increases once the failure condition is less and less satisfied. This is maybe not uh, properly said, but once this inequality difference between right hand side here and left hand side becomes greater and greater, that's the probability of uh, negative realizations would be larger. And this is what you can see actually from this expression here. I hope it explains and see you next time.